Okay, so um, as B was saying, this is not my story. This is uh, my friend Amir's story. He's here tonight. So if anyone wants to talk to him, he'll be up there. Um, he committed himself after finishing university in Kabul to um, dedicating himself to uh, starting a theatre group which and making films which challenged um, the way people uh, saw women's rights in Afghanistan. So he didn't make himself very popular. Um, he was working towards equality and uh, an anti-violence towards women message. Um, he had to leave. Members of his family were killed. Um, he was under threat. He left the way many people leave. He came here from Indonesia the way many people find they have to come from Indonesia. And he wasn't as lucky as some because his boat sank near Christmas Island. He survived after two hours in the water and he felt like he became the son of the sea, a new chance at life. Um, it's, it's very beautiful to hear the way he talks about this, this new chance. It's quite poetic. He, uh, you know... <laughs> very terrifying, harrowing experience. Um, 98 people on the boat, nine people died. He was in the water in the middle of the night for two hours, for all intents and purposes, lost at sea. Um, and he was rescued finally and uh, by the Australian Navy and after being taken to Christmas Island and Darwin and a couple of other places ended up in Sydney. He now lives in Auburn. Um, this is some documentation of the work that he was doing back at home, um, making films with his theatre group. Um, this is uh, a letter which is a, a letter of threat with a stone which was thrown over his girlfriend's um, wall into her garden because she was part of the theatre group as well. Um, now this is how they have to conduct their relationship because she's in Germany. Um, also, she was not able to return, so this is there for the time being how they communicate with each other um, with a great sense of longing. They want to be together and to marry and have a future. Um, he also still is committed to his goal of doing the work of changing the lot of women in Afghanistan. So, um, you know. At the moment, he's in limbo on a bridging visa. He can't work. He can't study. Um, he takes himself to the gym to try and keep fit. But, you know, it's very hard when you're in that limbo, possibly for two or three years, uh, not knowing if you'll have a future here or if you'll be sent back to a place where you won't be safe, um, not to succumb to the black dog. So there are you know, six guys living in a two-bedroom flat. This is a friend of his who he travelled from India uh, through um, Malaysia, Indonesia to Australia. He's living out at Auburn. This is a Turkish mosque. It's not one that you'll find any Hazara people in. It's a Sunni um, mosque. Um, uh, so... You know, he, he's not a, a bigoted or a racist guy. He's got friends from all kinds of um, backgrounds, but there are definitely people in the community who f find those sorts of things problematic. Um, Auburn is a very multicultural suburb. Um, you know, there are people there from, from Afghanistan, there are people from Syria, from... This is the Kabul Bakery. If you're ever out there, one of these... Loaves of bread cost a dollar twenty, and they're very delicious. Um, and they they come out warm. They put them like this so that they don't sweat on top of each other when you buy them. Um, this woman was happy for me to take her photo from behind, but not from the front, um, which is something that I'm, I'm all sorts of things I'm learning about going out to Auburn and photographing people out there. Um, so these are things we don't see in the. Um, eastern suburbs of Sydney. Um, these are two Hazara women. Um, we don't see, um, you know, shops selling equipment for, you know, kebabs. There are quite a number of uh, hairdressing salons out there which do 
romping business, halal butcher. Um, this is a Turkish restaurant that we ate in a little while ago. We don't, we don't see posters like this on the wall, healing through the Quran, and we don't see reminders of the Ramadan festival coming up shortly at the beginning of July. Um, we don't see things like starts, which is the service for the um, treatment and rehabilitation of people who've experienced trauma and torture. Um, and we don't see shops selling hookers, um, as you can see up there in the background, um, or, you know, amazing drums or, um, you know, all sorts of things. This, this guy's from Iran. Um, we watched the football together for a while. I felt this photograph uh, said a lot about, I'm calling him Amir tonight because it's better for him if we don't use his real name as he's still an asylum seeker. He's not considered a refugee yet. But he told me, I want to be gentle with people. I want to be soft with people, you know. Um, and that's very much his nature. He's a very lovely young man, an admirable young man. Anyway, here he is with some of his mother's cousin's children, I think that's right, and their children, at the um, opening of the exhibition from last week. Um, and this is a photograph, you might recognise Chalmers Street here, near the train station. And it's supposed to indicate that his life is standing still while he's in this limbo, waiting for his... Um, his application to be processed and the world moves on around him, um, which is an excruciating place to be. Anyway, so we all have to try and change the way our government is dealing with these people.